generous, friendly, welcoming people are an irreplaceable gift in our lives. You might be a young person, perhaps showing up next fall to a, a new school. You don't know where the bathrooms are. You don't know anything. But perhaps a student who's been there welcomes you, greets you, shows you around, warns you not to have the mystery meet in the cafeteria, gives you all those little words of comfort and advice that you need. For adults, maybe you've taken a new job or moved into a new neighborhood. You don't know anybody. You miss your old friends. But someone from the neighborhood shows up with a cake or says, why don't you join us? We're going to play cards next Tuesday. Welcomes you, is gracious to you, is friendly, makes you feel at home. When I was a seminarian a long, long time ago, we had a superior who would sometimes rap on the table at a meal and say, gentlemen, a meal is a social event where food happens to be served. Now, we were late teens, early 20s. We approached the table in the refectory like hogs to be fed. We were ready to eat. But he was reminding us the greatest part of the banquet was one another. Our friendship, our brotherhood in Christ. That we should feast on that as much as we were feasting on food. We all know what it's like to be welcomed into somebody else's home and treated like it's your home. Mi casa et su casa. Did I say that right? My house is your house. Immediately the visitor is welcomed as a part of the family. It's a wonderful feeling. It makes life a gift. And it reminds us that we are called to be generous to other folks. The great good news about that basic human experience, really that necessity, is that it reflects our good God. In the Gospel of John, the preface, it says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. One of the translations is the Word tabernacle among us, pitched his tent among us. God didn't save us from a distance. He plunged himself in Christ into our world. Jesus was like us in everything but sin, and he welcomed us into God's world. In a certain sense, he never left his Father when he dwelt among us. When he ascended to the right hand of the Father, he never really left us when he went up into paradise. It is the great Christian mystery that we should begin our paradise right now here on earth. And Jesus has not left us. In a certain sense, as he ascended into heaven, he descended into the sacraments. We have those seven sacraments that truly make Christ present. We know especially in the most holy Eucharist is true body, blood, soul, and divinity is present truly among us as our food and drink. Even here on earth, we are in communion with our risen Lord. He has shared everything with us. He even shares with us his Father, now our Father, our Abba. He shares with us his precious body and blood until he comes again at the end of time and history as the Lord of the Lord takes us with us in the paradise. I hope all the first communicants of this cathedral today, all your lives long, adults and young people, cherish the memory of your first communion. Realize what a wondrous gift it is. God feeds you with his presence, with the gift of his love, and that your savor your enjoyment, your reverence for the Seth grows every day you live on earth. Sunday Mass is not an option. Sunday Mass is not one of those things we kind of do when we feel like it. 
We need Christ in the Eucharist that we can live our Christian life. You know, if we stop eating regular food, we get sick and die. If we stop sharing the body and the blood of Christ, our souls wither up. And we don't have the power and grace and presence of our Lord to guide us into heaven. And what we do together on this great feast of the Ascension, as we remember the first communicants, what we do in this splendid cathedral is supposed to guide everything we do outside. So that we are givers and servers, people who share generously our lives, that we reach out to people when they're in trouble, that we comfort people who need our love, that we're ready to be merciful even to those who offend us, because God is so loving and merciful and good to each one of us. I've had a couple great meals in my life, <laughs> more than I should. And there is something wonderful about a banquet. Uh, you're there with friends, the food tastes good, you enjoy uh, what's being served, you enjoy one another, feel your own, even if it's not your family, you feel their family, and it is a blessing, something that reminds us of an eternal blessing that is to come. But there is also a responsibility in that experience to do the same, to be welcoming, merciful, loving, giving, serving, as Jesus has always been with us, and as God, our Abba, our Father, is with us. Whenever we gather around his table, the table of the Lord. So God bless all the first communicants in this cathedral. God bless all of us who maybe made our first communion years ago, decades ago. May this solemnity of the Lord's ascension continue to win our hearts, keep our eyes focused on the goal, fill us with encouragement, or we're tired, or in trouble, or hungry, and lead us to that banquet in heaven, which lasts forever and ever, and is a gift beyond all.